Hi, I'm Joanne Clark, and I'm a member of Network Connections, a BNI group in Geelong that meets every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. And today I'm going to interview the current president of our chapter, Jurgen Strauss. Hi, Jurgen. Hi, Joanne. And I'd like to make sure that anyone who's listening to this podcast knows that they're very welcome to come along to our BNI group and meet a group of highly professional business owners who are committed to building success not only in their own businesses, but in their fellow members' businesses, so that the Geelong economy really does thrive. So still welcome to come along. So, Jürgen, I've got a couple of questions that I'll just work through with you. So people listening to the podcast get a bit of a a feeling for who you are as a person. They're obviously going to be able to see you on the screen. And they hear about how you developed your business and what, what you love about it. So I wanted to start with asking you about when you were a child and you were growing up, what what was something that you always wanted to do? Uh, well, like all good little boys when I was very young, um, I admired my father and um, I always wanted to be an engineer like he was. Right. But unfortunately, um, I was always, any toys that I got, I would pull them to bits to find out how they worked, um, but I was never any good at putting them back together again, so I'd always just dump them on his desk and leave them for him to put back together. So it became pretty obvious soon that I wasn't, I probably wasn't really suited to be an engineer. Right. Yes. So you were, you were into the investigation, but not so into the reconstruction work. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to know how all the bits that went together but then, you know, it was up to someone else to do the tedious part of reassembly. Exactly, yeah. So once I, once I figured out how it worked and what was inside it, I was kind of done. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Mm. So how, how would you describe yourself in one what you do in one sentence? Like what's your elevator pitch for your business? Okay, yeah. so um, well, we help smart business owners that are frustrated with the internet turn their online presence into a business generation machine that works even when they're not working. Right. Mm. So how, when you say business owners who are frustrated, yeah. do we have to be frustrated or? Not necessarily. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you're turning it into something that attracts more business in. So really if I'm looking for growth through that channel, then you give the next growth in. That's right, yeah. So today the, a website, for example, is one of the most powerful marketing tools that any business can have. Mm. And the unfortunate reality is that 90% of websites just don't deliver business to the, to the business owners. Mm. Um, and, and there's no reason why that should be, because if you do a website properly and if you also utilize all the other tools, with uh, that come with the internet and there's always new stuff happening then you should be able to turn your website into a business generation machine. And that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? It certainly <laughs> would, yeah. So, hmm. very interesting, I think. So what's been your journey in your business to this point? What, you know, what are some of the big achievements or challenges you know, that you've come through in your business and then perhaps maybe even in your career leading up to your business? Yeah, well, I ended up uh, doing chemistry instead of engineering um, and uh, went through um, a a period in the photographic industry, which was great until um, digital photography was born and and then I saw the writing on the wall there Mm -hmm. and moved into um, the specialty chemicals area that was developing raw materials for paint and surface coatings and those kind of things and spent 23 years with one company and moved through a lot of different roles, of course. Um, So I managed remote teams right across the world um, in the technical area. I, um, in 1996 or 97, I was involved in building a very large website online. And that was fascinating. I kind of learnt the power of the internet there really for the first time because before then it was all about email and and having a bit of intranet on on um, the company's servers but there we saw the power of reaching out to the 
you know, the community and the end user of our products um, through this internet thing and yeah. um, learning about search engine optimization in the days before Google was even known. Um, so that was uh, quite fascinating. And I guess um, in 2007 I started my own business and I thought I would um, use the experience that I'd gained in the large global corporation over a whole range of different roles and bring those benefits and that knowledge to small business. And it very quickly became apparent to me that the website area was the one thing that people were very focused on and had the biggest need around. Um, so that's where I focused my energies. Yeah. So, so you you brought with you all that experience and background, like your journey of growing and learning from the chemistry, mm -hmm. chemical industry, and the photography industry into the small business realm. So when you, um, I mean, I do agree with you, I think the challenge for many small business owners when confronting starting a business and putting together your web page, while some people may be able to put together their web page, knowing that it's doing the job that a web page can do in a business and it's really adding value mm. to the business, I think that's really where the, you know, the rubber hits the road, so to speak, and it's challenging to know, how have I got it right? How have I managed to... You know, is this, how is this working for me? So how do you keep that, I suppose, reassurance or that put in place a structure for your clients to know that the website you've built for them is really delivering results? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, my, um, all through my career, I've been very process driven. Um, so one of the big things that I did in the corporation was actually develop a process for um, researchers who feel that they're in the creative space but develop a process for them to be more productive in developing new products and so on so that was a big challenge but having um, processes in place and also beginning kind of everything with a strategy and a plan to go forward and then a goal what the ultimate outcome um, is going to look like um, is kind of the philosophy I bring into into the website. So we, you know, we start off with developing a strategy um, and objectives around what what does the website need to achieve? What how does it fit in with the overall business objectives? What does it need to provide the business? And then we develop an action plan going forward and strategic steps and a pathway to get there. And then of course my science background brings with me that we measure everything as we're doing it and yeah. so then we have data that we can look at and and see where improvement opportunities are as we move forward so that's well, essentially the approach we take mm. so it's very it's very transparent accountability then mm. that built into that whole process with the clients that's great yeah. so what on a daily basis what do you spend most of your time actually doing yeah, well, a lot of um, my time right now is actually involved in podcasting. So yeah. I've sort of started this adventure in podcasting, and I can talk about that a little separately. Um, mm -hmm. I have a team of four people that work for me and, and really do the nitty gritty of building the websites and so on. So I get involved in developing a strategy uh, with the client or let me take a step back. I get involved in bringing the business on board, uh, building relationships with clients, um, and then developing with them the strategies and moving forward in terms of what the result is going to look like. And then my team um, really does the implementation steps, and I just um, have an overview role in that. Right. And so I do a, I do a, a fair bit of my time also. I spend on research in terms of new things that are happening and assessing whether there's a fit for what we're doing because we like to be ahead of the game, we like to be innovative all the time. Mm -hmm. Cool, so you're doing a lot of research and overseeing the team's work? Yes, yeah. And probably, yeah, cool, alright. So what, what would be something that keeps you awake at night? Um, well, the main thing that keeps me awake at night is I can't shut down my brain. <laughs> if I'm doing something and I, I sort of 
think of a bunch of ideas and sometimes I get up and write them down on a bit of paper that lives next to my bed but um, if, if it's a bigger thing um, writing it down on a bit of paper isn't enough to shut the mind down and I'll start to play through scenarios or get other ideas and you know recently I had a few occasions where I've got up at three in the morning because I've decided I'm not going to get back to sleep so I might as well get up and start doing something. <laughs> So it, your excitement and enthusiasm and creation, that's, that's, that's what right. Yeah. Right. Cool. So how did, how did um, Innova Biz come about? What was the main goal, goal behind the business name? How did, how did you come up with that name? Well, essentially it's a combination of innovation and business. And mm -hmm. like in hindsight, it's pretty obvious, but we did actually sit around the kitchen table and brainstorm for several days until right. we came up until we came up with that and it's some so and we had a whole lot of different uh, ideas there I can't even remember what they were but at some point you know and Nova Biz was one of the ideas and it was like yep I like that and that was it. You know, and I mean on the journey you've been on through your business I know more and more you're focusing on innovation mm. innovation with clients who are being limited as well as your own innovations in your business so you know, it is a good match, really, isn't it? How yeah. Uh, yeah. I pick those words that match up, even though at the time you probably it, had yeah. to talk through. That's right. It just triggers something in the unconscious mind, and away you go. <laughs> uh, mm. So, what do you do when you're not working, really? Um, well, I'm a real keen hobby photographer. In fact, I've been taking photographs since I was three years old. I worked out the other day, um, okay. so I'm still doing that, and I'm kind of enjoying the fruits of digital photography now and I've got my own digital photography website of course um, so I do a lot um, of photography and really enjoy that um, I do a lot of bike riding as well so I'm a, a probably madly obsessed cyclist some people would say um, I'm currently training for an event to raise funds for the SES where we cycle 660 kilometers in five days right. so <laughs> I need to get fit for that and prepare the body for that. Is that um, over hills or is it flat? Uh, quite a bit of it will be over hills, yes. So okay. I think the, the first day is actually about 180 kilometres across the Great Divide. I so know. It'll be a bit so of a... You really will have to be fit for that. Yes, that's right, yeah. Oh. So at the moment I'm get, trying to get out in the morning and do 50 k's every morning. Right. which is good um, and, and a lot of the time I'm on my own so that's a great time um, to kind of get ideas as well and, and play through some ideas and, and one of the guests on my podcast that I was interviewing the other day used this term washing the mind um, for getting you know out and doing something different and then coming up with a whole lot of new ideas and that's kind of the experience I'm having with that um, when I'm out on my own on the bike. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And I, yeah, well, I think that riding, especially riding a bike in Victoria, can be very refreshing if you're doing it in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I can see how it is a washing the mind experience. Mm. So, have you, have you read any books recently that perhaps have inspired you or that you would recommend? Um, yeah, there's, a, there's one I'm, actually there's two I'm kind of reading right now. One I've nearly finished, it's one called um, Pitch Anything. Um, right. by a guy called Oren Claff, whose mm -hmm. background is actually in um, investment banking, but he now runs a multi-million dollar consulting business for basically pitching new ideas to investors and getting you know, uh, large sums of money invested in these new ideas. And, and the book Pitch Anything is really about positioning yourself and how to, how to sell your message in a very concise way so that it comes across and, and actually, you know, that the message comes across because most people these days, you know, their attention span is pretty short because they can get a lot of information quickly on the internet or wherever, so they don't want to listen to, you know, a two-hour PowerPoint presentation. They want it in two minutes. Yeah. So that's a, a really good book. And another one that's kind of related to that that I'm reading and I'm just trying to, I can't think of the author's name at the moment, but it's called... Um, ninja words, right? 
and and it, it is again all about communication and how do you structure your communication in a way that you know the message gets across and is convincing. Yeah. Well, as you know, I'm passionate about <laughs> how people communicate with uh, using NLP and uh, metadynamics to. Yeah. Yeah, ninja words. That sounds like a great book. Are there any books in you, Jürgen? Any books in me? Yeah. Um, Just waiting to emerge. Well, I, I mentioned earlier that I'm doing this podcasting series, and I can see that perhaps turning into a book at some stage because I'm, it, that's getting me introduced to some really fascinating people that you know, have done some amazing things and that, um, you know, in sharing their stories with the uh, audience of my podcast, they actually, you know, there's a whole lot of lessons in that that are applicable, not just in, in whatever industry they're in, but across the board in business um, and even in life in general. So I, I can see, you know, there could be a book there. Uh-huh. Yeah, it sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So if you could wave a magic wand and fix one thing in business right now, what would it be? Um, if I could make a magic wand, I guess um, it would probably be how to, uh, you know, scale things very quickly. Um, what do you mean by that? Um, well, the, the thing is we, we kind of get a bunch of work and then we're all busy and then we get a little bit more work. So we either need more resources, but getting more resources on board means you need to take a step back, take time to make sure the processes are working well, take time to train the new people on board before yeah. you know they're fully contributing and before you take that next step up um, in kind of scaling up the business to take on more projects. So I guess if I could have a magic wand, I'd kind of fast track that whole thing. <laughs> so you have that tomorrow, yesterday instead of tomorrow. That's right, yeah. So, or, or have it in a in a way that you just turn a switch on and say, okay, I need more resources. You just turn a switch on and bring some more in. Every every business owner's dream, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you currently working on? Um, we've got um, we've got a number of projects on the go right now. We've got a we're about to launch actually a couple of websites that are close to going live. Um, where looking at a couple of other things where we're taking more than just so we do more than just websites so for example um, online booking systems is one where we've got a project coming up that we're looking to work on so if um, a business for example has a whole lot of resources that they hire out um, yep. either on an hourly or a weekly or daily weekly monthly basis um, rather than have people physically keep calendars and call people to remind them. Um, we're looking to build a system where the their customer can go online and book those resources, select the resource, select the time frame, pay online up front and then um, get automated reminders telling them that you know your booking is coming up in a week or a day um, through SMS and through email. Mm -hmm. So that taking the repetitive tasks that are involved with something like that away from you know the people who who might be currently doing it and so they can focus their activities on higher value stuff. Yeah. So that's one that, that we're really excited about. Um, we're also doing some event management ones um, and another one that you might know well is a, a learning management system where um, people can join a website for a particular course that might go over a period of say six months um, and they're drip fed material over the course of that time. Um, yeah. When they complete a module they undergo an assessment, they do an online assessment and they can't go on to the next module until they've done that assessment and so and, and the business reporter, sorry the business owner gets reports back of progress of the trainees as well and structuring in structuring this in such a way that it may be eligible also for um, formal training accreditation if the material you know meets the standards as well. Yeah well you know I'm already very excited about that. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just see it opening up so much in, in terms of possibility for people 
learning using the new technology that's in place. Mm. Yeah. That's great. Mm. So, um, what's a good bread and butter referral for you? If we were looking, if we were out there and listening to people, um, and I was looking, and I thought, oh, I should refer them to Jurgen. What would I be? Doing? What would what would they? What sort of business would it be? And what would I be hearing from them? Yeah. Well, you might be hearing something like, I don't, I'm not getting enough leads, or I don't have enough um, good quality leads. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, you, people may be even more specific and say, my website isn't actually doing anything for me. It's yeah. really just a brochure site, and I was hoping that more would happen. Um, yeah. The other thing that you might hear a lot in talking about search engines, people often say things like, um, I'm not on page one, I really want to be on page one of the search engines. And yeah. I always kind of drill down on that one because what they're really looking for, I guess, is to get business from their website. Um, oh. So those people, and I guess they, you know, they might be people that don't yet have a website or they have yeah. a website that they're unhappy with the level of um, engagement, the level of leads and, and business that they're generating from it. Um, yeah. Those would be our bread and butter referrals. And could it also be um, someone who perhaps has a website but is challenged by maintaining it and keeping it up to date? Would that be? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, so we're actually working with somebody right now that um, is having exactly that problem. So they're looking to um, change the images on their website, they've redone all their photography and they want to uh, change the images, they want to improve the um, content on the site, but they're really struggling to actually do that because um, actually the system they're using is, is way over-engineered for them as well, but it um, makes yeah. it very difficult for them to update um, and they end up spending huge amounts of time trying to figure it out and trying to update the website where their, you know, their um, value add to the business um, is actually elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. So we can, we, we can definitely help with those. Yeah, so if they're, if they're using the only non-renewable resource, time, yeah. on their website when they shouldn't be, send them to you. That's <laughs> right, yeah. Cool. So what, what would be a, a cream referral for you? So and I am like an, um, a really, really good solid mm. referral for you. Well, cream, cream referral are probably businesses that are larger, you know, they might be in the manufacturing space or the training space or you know, yeah. other services that that are looking to get more from their website. So, you know, they obviously they want leads and business from the website, but they're also looking as to how um, they can set up some other systems within the website or allied to the website that will save them time and, and save them resources, such as you know, the um, the booking system that I mentioned or the event management system or the other one that we're playing with right now and we've got a real, we think we've got a really good way of doing is, is a, a compository of business processes and documents and so on that, you know, there's one place where all of those documents and all of that information is and it's easily searchable, easy to find, everybody has access to it within the organisation and it just mm. makes things run a lot more easily and smoothly. Fantastic. Well, so what, what about your dream referral? Well the dream referrals, I also love doing workshops and presentations. Um, so a dream referral for me, I guess, is to run a keynote presentation or a workshop for a larger organisation, something like Oz Innovation or the Australian Industrial Research Group yeah. or perhaps the Australian Chamber of Manufacturers or the Australian Institute of Marketing or Management, yeah. something like that, yeah. And what, what sort of workshop would you run for? Um, well, there's a whole range of things. I, I'm sort of looking, I'm getting excited now because um, I did some workshops around how to get more sales from your website um, as part of the August Small Business Festival and there are a bunch of people came up to me afterwards and said, well, do you run any other workshops? You know, what else can I sign up for? And, and so I'm thinking, well, I probably should have a whole, um, whole drawer full of them that I can answer that question and say, well, have a look at these, which one would you like? Yeah. So, you know, looking back at 
things like, um, you know, as I said earlier, I've been remote, uh, managing remote teams um, since way back in the 1980s. Um, so, you know, today um, a lot of small businesses are looking to grow through offshoring and outsourcing yeah. um, and, and thus need to manage remote teams. So I think I can help, you know, teach people how to do that well. Um, things like um, systems in their business, how to yep. implement systems in the business and how to um, you know, then use the internet to set up um, or the technology within the net internet to actually make that work really efficiently. So yep. those kind of things, as well as, of course, everything around websites and getting websites to work well. Mm. And, and my philosophy is, um, you know, that I really love to help people and love to make a difference to people's businesses and even their lives. And um, I, I try to give as much as I can in these workshops. And, and I heard somebody um, on another discussion saying, well, you know, and, and the question was, well, if you give all this stuff away, aren't you losing your competitive edge? And the answer was fascinating, and I thought, well, that's that's really good. Um, it was, well, you know, I give my best stuff away because it then forces me to be more innovative, to stay yeah. ahead of the game. Um, well, so, well, that's really good. <laughs> well, that's right, and you know, like if you're giving people value, then when they are shopping for more, you know, of course, they know where to go to get the value because they've already mm -hmm. had it. Yeah. yeah. So, if I'm out there looking for, say, your Dream referral. If I so, if I'm looking at peak association or um, organisation, nationally or internationally, mm. who's looking for someone to present on innovation or using the internet to solve problems that they've got in their business around either communication efficiency or um, you know people management, mm. then they would be the people I would be referring to. You, yes. Yeah, yeah, that'd be ideal. Mm. Right. So, what makes you different and outstanding? Um, well, as I say, I you know I really love to help people and and get a buzz out of you know knowing that I've helped them. I guess there's a whole bunch of things, and and some of them took me a little while to actually realise and appreciate. Um, probably the first one is that we don't bombard people with kind of techno speak. Uh, we try to keep things transparent and make it easy for everybody to understand. So yeah. if somebody wants to have a big discussion about you know, the technology and, and what's all the code and stuff we do in there, we're happy to do that. But most people, of course, don't want to do that because that's why they come to us in the first place. So they, you know, they're overwhelmed by that stuff. So we try to make it really plain. I use analogies in a lot of my presentations to you know, a website is in some ways analogous to a bricks and mortar store so that you know, some of the things you do, well a lot of things you do on a website are very much the same as you would do in a bricks and mortar store. Yes, the mechanism is different but the philosophy is actually the same so I try to kind of explain things in a very plain manner. Um, we tackle things as I said earlier, we, we tackle things strategically. We put plans into place that we follow, um, very structured and step by step. And we have measures in place as well to make sure that you know, we're either achieving the target or if not, that we know where the shortfall is and how we can um, address that. And a lot of um, web designers or web developers, um, I found out over the course of the last seven years, don't actually have you know, measures in place that are free um, to use and, you know, take about 10 minutes to actually set up and implement within a website. Um, a lot of people just don't do that. So, you know, we do that as a course. Um, we give people access to all that data so that they can view it themselves, so that they can hold us accountable as well. Um, and, yeah, and then, of course, you know, our focus. So I kind of tell my people we don't just build websites. We provide solutions to our customers' problems. So that's um, something we try to keep in mind all the time. Mm -hmm. If I picked out three, three key things there, number one for me would be an IT person who speaks plain English. Yay! <laughs> and number two, that you are 
working with the client so that they work on a level that's, that they want to. So if they want to know all the technological background and be hands-on involved with that, then you can do that. Or if you want to have the overview, the big picture view, and, and have you take care of all the back of house, if you like, stuff around the website, then you can do that. Yeah. And the final thing is that I think you're talking about delivery in a way that enables the client to continue to manage and monitor the deliverables from their website. So you're setting it up and showing the client how they can keep track of what is happening and isn't happening on their website, which means they can then be proactive addressing issues on the website where there's low performance or, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Cool. So what's, what, um, who's, who's in your network that we might want to know? Well, <laughs> there's um, lots of people. So I'm, I'm um, involved in a um, mastermind group that are primarily WordPress consultants. So WordPress is one of the um, platforms that we use for our websites. It's an open yeah. source platform, so it's available to anybody. But of course, we um, are on this mastermind group that looks at how best to serve the customer with that platform. And, and recently, I was actually on a um, Hangout, a Google Hangout, with the founder of Automatic, who, um, you know, one of the developers of WordPress. So there's a good contact for <laughs> people to know. Um, yeah. Also, the podcasting I'm doing right now, I'm getting put in touch with some amazing people that I'm, I'm interviewing and I have interviewed. So, for example, um, on Friday, I interviewed the folks from Carbon Nexus here at in Geelong who are doing some amazing things. Um, yeah. I'm chatting tomorrow morning with a chap in um, uh, Glen uh, Finkel from in uh, from Purity in the yeah. U.S. and Purity have a bunch of really innovative products. Um, that have sparked NASA's interest. So they're actually working with NASA um, on you know, using these products in space applications. That's wow. really exciting. And another chap that I'm going to be interviewing shortly is in Portugal who's developed a system whereby colorblind people can recognize color. So he's got a coded system that you know people can tell red from green and whatever, even though they're colorblind. So, so there's wow. lots of exciting people that I'm getting in contact with through the podcast. Yeah. Um, and that's, I'm hoping that, you know, that will really open up um, my network to the members of, um, you know, BNI and I Network Connections. Fantastic. And, and uh, you know, certainly we're going High tech in that uh, BNI group, which is a good thing, I think. Yeah. There's a lot of like, tech BNI groups around, but uh, if you want a high tech BNI group, we're going to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what, what's the future for you and for an overview? What do you say is the future for you? Well, as I said earlier, I'm, you know, the magic wand is probably going to be a lot of hard work in terms of scaling up the business. Um, I'd like to see it uh, get to a point where, you know, we have uh, international clients and we have a lot of clients across the world and perhaps, you know, maybe even, um, maybe even have physical presence in, in a couple of other countries. So that's, that's still a little bit vague, that idea. Um, yeah. But that's certainly where I'm pushing that, scaling that and looking at other opportunities in terms of what you know, what technology is coming down the track and, and where we might come in. Um, so I'm, I'm actually posting a uh, uh, little um, presentation I did, uh, recorded yesterday, um, around disruptive technology and my experience in the photography industry, which of course, you know, when it went digital, that was very disruptive. Um, and we're looking out for that kind of thing to see, you know, what, what can we jump on board early and I think yeah, we jumped on board WordPress very early. Um, yeah. That 
WordPress, when we started using it, was a sort of a blogging platform for people that, you know, did blogging as a hobby from home, and now it powers 25% of the internet. So um, that's, you know, we're kind of always keeping our eye out for things like that that are going to do that transformation and, and try and be on board. Of course, we don't necessarily pick pick all the winners, but hopefully we'll get one or two. Um, for me personally, I guess I'm I'm looking at getting to a point of um, actually spending most of my time on presentations and um, keynote speeches and podcasting. I'm really enjoying the podcast journey, um, and get to a point where perhaps you know I can spend between four and eight hours a week working, and I can do that from anywhere I want to. Will we be going on a TED talk soon? Oh yeah. <laughs> see where where I could do one yeah so what about the future for your for your industry for web development and you know innovation using the power of the world wide web yeah well there's a couple of big trends happening there and of course one is you know these little mobile devices that we all carry around um, yeah. so you know there's been a big movement over the last four or five years to um, make sure websites actually displayed properly on the small mobile devices. The next stage of that, I think, is that you know a lot of things are going to go to to these apps. I mean, there's a lot of apps around right now, um, but that I can see that just ramping up to the next level where um, you know mobile websites will just get totally replaced by apps, and you'll be able to do a whole lot of different things. But then the other big thing that's happening in the innovation world is what, what's known as the Internet of Things, which oh. is machines talking directly to other machines and carrying out processes efficiently. So instead of, um, uh, well, for the home home use, for example, you know, we have, uh, if the refrigerator, for example, if the temperature goes above a certain value, or the freezer, let's say, goes above a certain value and there's a risk of food spoiling, um, yeah. then, you know, today you can already have an app on your phone to monitor that and you can go and have a look at that and if that actually happens then you might be able to turn the temperature up or down, whatever it is. You know, you can remotely start your um, heating on the way home from your app on the phone um, so that by the time you get home it's nice and comfortable. But the next layer of that is to actually remove the human intervention and to have the whole thing fully automated so that um, you know, um, machines will kind of, the sensors will determine, yep, it's out of range of the ideal temperature and, and some machine will say, well, you know, you need to cool or you need to heat and trigger that happening. Now, in, yeah. in, in industry, of course, that's... Um, going to be massive and that's I think there's a huge opportunity there particularly in Australia for becoming more competitive um, in terms of having you know manufacture where um, machines just kind of manufacture the whole process once the design or the process has been set up and designed by the human but then everything's set in place to run by itself oh, I can just the pizza shop you know with the um the typing your order and the machine makes the pizza and the drones. <laughs> <are accepted>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, well, there's some exciting things happening. And if you have a look at um, GE Innovation, or oh, I'm not sure if innovation is the right one, but certainly GE have got a, an advanced um, um, technology group that publishes a lot of stuff on the internet. There's uh, some exciting things there. Uh, people like VW in their, you know, their manufacturing plants in Germany are doing some incredible things with this kind of process. So that's, I think that's going to really revolutionise um, industry in a way. I mean, in, in fact, it's being referred to as the fourth industrial revolution wow. in a lot of publications. So. Wow. And of course, that's, that's all based on you know, the capabilities of the internet. Yeah, it is, yeah. Fantastic. So what, what's the one piece of advice you would give any business owner now who wants to grow and get more word about the firm? Join BNI. <laughs> of course, <laughs> and, of course. 
Um, and yeah, join a good chapter of BNI like Network Connections. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so where can people reach out to you to say thank you for sharing your knowledge or get in touch with you? Well, they can um, send me an email at, on, through jurgen at innovabiz.com.au or they can look us up on Facebook. So InnovaBiz have a Facebook page. InnovaBiz is also on Google Plus and we're also on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And of course our website InnovaBiz.com.au. Of course, of course. And that's you with the J. That's right. <laughs> J-U-R-G-E-N. That's right. Yes. And if people are interested in my photography, it's JurgenStrauss.com. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And there's great photos. I believe you have an award-winning photograph up there. Recently. I did, yes, yes. A friend of mine um, who, who's also a really keen photographer told me about this website that runs competitions and he said when you get, a, he rides his bike with me so we're out riding the bike, he said when you get home I want you to put your tiger photo, so he, he was referring to a specific photo on that um, site. So I did that and um, I actually got an award for it. Fantastic. Mm. <laughs> All right, so who, who would you suggest that we also interview on the Network Connections podcasts, and why you? Um, well, I think you suggested Ivan Meisner at some point, so <laughs> that, you know, I'd reinforce that suggestion. Um, I guess the other one I'd be interested to hear from um, uh, people like Brian Tracy. Right. Um, or David Allen, who, mm -hmm. you know, they're both really great keynote presenters. They're in sort of the productivity area. Brian Tracy, of course, is heavily involved with BNI and I believe is a friend of uh, Ivan Meisner, so I think they'd be really good. Yeah, yeah, I'm still that with Well, thank you very much, Jürgen, for being part of the Network Connections podcast and sharing with us your insights and understanding of developing a business and using the internet to maximise our value. I have to comment on the on the great uh, poster you have behind you. Because as you were talking, I was looking at it and I was thinking, yes, I can see that there's kind of a bit of a, a molecular structure there that reflects yeah. the chemist background. But also as you got more into the future of your business and how you see it, where potentially you'll have people networked all over the world mm. to business with and for you. There's a, it's quite a, um, accurate symbology really for you know the things. Mm. Yeah, well yeah. I've got a, I've got a great designer who also happens to be in our chapter who uh, is able to translate uh, the essence of a business very much into a visual representation. Yeah. And also, you know, she's, kept, she's done a good job of capturing the essence of you, the person, too. So, yeah, that's great. Well, thank you very much again for today. And, um, Thanks, Joanne. It's been a pleasure.